immunology, we have three lines of defense. We have our skin and our, our openings that are lined with mucous membranes. Um, those non-specific immune soldiers live in there, and that's, they're the ones who engage in combat when we are exposed to something. Then we have the second level, which is inflammation and where interferon is produced, uh, which by the way, uh, AIDS and fevers and other things like that, that would be the second stage. And the third one is deep in the body, and it's when we produce antibodies, B cells, memory cells, and that by the way, is when long-term immunity develops. And this is a real simplified example, but this is what Dr. Marini told me, and this is how you can share what I know, what I learned. The Th1 arm, arm of the immune system is the innate immune system referred often to, and it, its job is to identify acute illnesses through multiple exposures in the body, to process them, and to filter them out of the body, resulting in a strong or dominant Th1. That's a good thing. That's what we want. Th2 arm is the adaptive arm, lives in the background. That's where long-term immunity develops over time. And it takes years to develop and requires multiple exposures in the Th1 arm. Okay? So this will help you whenever you, you know, you're thinking about this and you have a baby running a fever or whatever. I want this image in your mind, ladies, because what the goal is, is that we want two strong, balanced immune system arms. Okay? And that's just a good visual to kind of help you realize that we want strong, balanced immune system. That's the goal. Now, what happens with natural immune development from birth forward? We now know that the thymus has been developing T T1 cells. The baby and mom have been coexisting. The immune system has been suppressed in the baby because mom and baby can't fight. So now, baby, it's time for baby to come out and start living. So what happens from birth forward? Passing through the birth canal stimulates the Th1 arm into action. It's like wake up time, time to go to work, okay? As the child travels down through the birth canal, they pick up necessary bacteria and flora from mother by their mouth, nose, and it stimulates Th1 into activity. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Good thing. Okay. Also, remember I told you that the immune system is tied in with the nervous system? that they have neuroimmunology now in medicine? Well, compression of the baby's body while traveling down the birth canal initiates the natural maturation of the infant's reflexes, allowing proper neural development to take place. Another great reason why vaginal and natural birth is so important. And then when baby gets that first wonderful human milk, Okay, it's called colostrum. It also encourages Th1 and the bacteria to colonize and establish healthy gut flora. You see, babies come out pretty much sterile. They're completely sterile. And so we want to introduce good, healthy flora from the mouth through breastfeeding that gets down there and lines all of the intestinal tract and, and, and establishes the healthy gut flora that is necessary for proper immune function. The gut is where 75% of the immune system lives and the bacterial flora is very important for healthy immunity. Healthier children have a Th1 dominant immune system and lifelong immunity because Th1 cells are the infection fighters, especially intracellular viral infections. Is that a good thing to know? No. Why don't they teach this, teach this in high school? Why aren't they teaching this to doctors in med school? Modern immunologists don't even often know this information. So it is no accident that babies put everything in their mouth. This is so that they can learn all about their environment out here in here. And you know, the first thing they do is they start with their hands and then their toes, and then everything goes in the mouth, right? And it's common for babies to have runny noses, run fevers, have swollen glands, and body rashes as the immune system filters out toxins and learns about its environment. You see, that's how nature intended it. And yet, we look at that as being sick. When I was raising my children and they had fevers, I was like, yeah, good. That immune system's starting. In fact, you'll notice it starts about somewhere between three and five months. Because that's when they start, you know, they really start to develop their own antibodies, by the way, about six months. Before that, they really can't develop their own antibodies. Why we're vaccinating before six months makes no scientific sense to me, okay? But that's when babies seem to start running fevers. And whenever they have their first fever, I call it a celebration. That baby's immune system is engaging. It's in combat and it's working, okay? So it's common for them to have runny noses. Runny noses is the body's getting rid of it through the mucus, mucus membranes. It's common for them to have fevers and swollen glands. Our glands are there to fight infection, are they not? 
Is a small implant a good thing or a bad thing? Good thing. Right. But so many people think it's, oh, oh, my baby's got a swollen gland. They run to the doctor for medication, right? Um, so the immune system is filtering out as it's learning about its environment. Infants get exposed to all bacteria, funguses, spores, viruses, infectious agents by their mouth, nose, ears, and lungs. Period. That's how nature intended it. That's why everything goes in the mouth. Millions of times a day, newborn babies are responding, and this is Dr. Marini, he says millions of times a day, newborn babies are responding to the dust in the air, to what they're putting in their mouth, to what they're being exposed to on the floor, you know, all of that. In fact, I challenge you, get on the floor and crawl for about four or five months, and everything you see, put in your mouth. <laughs> do you think you might have a fever, a sore throat, maybe swollen glands? You see, babies do that. And it's because their innate wisdom is saying, I need to know what's in your environment. I need to know how to deal with it when you get exposed. I need to know, you know, when they pick up flies that are dead or bugs off the floor, or they chew on the dog bone. Their little immune system is saying, I need to know what's going on out here. You see, I don't think God made any mistakes. I think that man is very arrogant to assume that they know more than our creator does. And, and so, you know, I want you to realize that if we crawled around on the floor putting everything in our mouth, we might have some fevers. We might have some runny noses. I mean, there's a lot of dust down there, okay? So it's not uncommon. In fact, when our baby runs a fever of 102 degrees, their body produces interferon. Interferon prevents <coughs> viral replication and inhibits cancer cells. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? A good thing. But did your doctor tell you that? Did he say, oh, 102, that's okay, that's good. We're fighting illnesses here. We're, we're, we're stopping viral replication. And then 103 degrees, guess what the body does? It says, stop feeding me. I have a bacterial imbalance, and I don't want you to eat. So it literally stores all of the nutrition in the spleen, pulls it from all over, and it stops feeding the bacteria. And the baby usually loses their appetite for a while. They might get nauseous. They might have diarrhea. They might throw up a little bit. But that is, again, how the body is saying, I'm in charge. And just because we don't understand what's going on, we assume things. And yet this is how the immune system functions and works to keep that baby alive and thriving. You with me? Acute inflammation is an early response to an injury or infection, and it lasts for days. And it gets swelling, redness, heat, pain at the site. And it's beneficial. It leads to the elimination of infection and tissue healing. If I fall off of this and I sprain my ankle and all of a sudden, poof, it swells up. That's my body saying, we have an emergency. We're going to throw healing gunk in there. We've got some tissue that's torn. We've got to break it down. We've got to rebuild it. Stay off of it. Okay? But yet, how many people take anti-inflammatories all the time because their body's in a state of inflammation all the time? So anyway... Acute inflammation is what children have when they have swollen glands, when they have that fever going, or they have a tummy ache and throw up, or their, whatever. Um, so anyway, natural exposure. When Th1 cells get involved, the result in life is lifelong immunity through the infectious agent. The immune system is learning about its environment. Overcoming challenges develops the immune system. Nothing gets strengthened in the human body by avoidance, only by developing in combat. If you've been sitting around all winter um, eating potato chips on the couch and in the spring you go to put on shorts and you go, oh my gosh, I better challenge my body. I need to exercise. You see, as you challenge your body, it becomes stronger. That's why we exercise our heart and do cardiovascular stuff. The immune system is no different. It, it gets, it's developed through combat. It takes about five to seven years to develop uh, an immune system. And if respected and not interfered with, a child will be pretty healthy. That's what I found with all five of my kids. In fact, um, I had five, um, three boys and two girls. My second was uh, my first son, and he was sensitive to everything in the environment. He was my fever runner, my swollen glands boy. He couldn't do any dairy products, which we weren't really eating them and, and at the time, but he was sensitive to everything. Every tooth he uh, cut was hard, and he was my boy who had um, uh, pertussis at 18 months. He was my boy who was very, very sensitive to everything. And looking back now, I believe it was because he was immune, he was toxic. Um, I, gave, I was given a Rogan vaccine after my first child that was, had 25 micrograms of thimerosal. I'm Rh negative, and I didn't know better back then. And um, although I was avoiding the vaccines, I didn't know Rogan had mercury in it. And he was the kid who came out looking just like a mercury-sensitive baby. 
And if I would have vaccinated him, I can guarantee you that boy would have been an autistic child. There's no doubt in my mind. The first five, six years of his life, we breastfed. I literally breastfed him for five years. Chickenpox was hard for him. But guess what? He got over it. And now he's 30 years old, strong like an ox, and he's got a one-year-old baby, and he is just so cool with natural immunity. So, you know, some kids, it's harder. And sometimes you do need to intervene. And I don't tell people don't do medication. But if you are concerned about the fever, know that the only real problem is if your children get dehydrated. And there are lots of ways that you can handle dehydration. Uh, we don't want to go into it now, but uh, dehydration is really the biggest concern with fevers. So always be sensitive to that. But did you know that the optimal age for infectious illnesses is between the ages of four and nine? That's where we're meant to have chickenpox, measles, you know, pertussis, if that's the case. Um, all of these infectious illnesses are there to build the immune system. And when you go through them and have natural immunity to them, I believe it's preparing you for adulthood so that we can deal with our environment. Um, Dr. Marini said a more accurate approach acknowledges the whole individual, realizing that when we inject a vaccine, the whole body is exposed to the whole vaccine and will respond. The use of antibiotics and other medications during pregnancy and labor can greatly affect the unborn child and mother, putting the child's immunity at risk. He said vaccines, antibiotics, and medication can cause long-term immune and health problems.